Hello everyone, welcome back to Spinksy Speed Shop. Today we're going to be doing a disc brake conversion on the Corolla. We have a set of uh, discs, calipers, brake pads, caliper bracket, handbrake cables, the whole hub and hub carrier as well. So essentially what we're going to be doing is just unbolting the rear drum brake assembly from the lower control arm and trailing arm and then just bolting up our new one. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so the first part of our process to removing the rear drums is to remove the old handbrake cables because the disc brakes, I believe, um, come, the cables come and sit on this side. So, I'm just going to follow our line under the car here. And it runs to behind the exhaust. So that's where... The uh, left side cable goes, or, or sorry, the right side cable runs like that up to here. So what we're going to have to do is remove our exhaust here. So we'll undo these two bolts and also remove um, the rear hanger for the rear muffler, which is here, up there. So we'll do that. Once we get the exhaust drop down, we'll remove some of the heat shielding. Then it will give us access to the handbrake lever um, T-piece. Okay, so we just got our exhaust off. It ended up being two 14 mil bolts at the front here where it connects to the catalytic converter. And all I used was a bunch of pry bars to pry off the rear exhaust hanger. It was a bit of a, a bit of a process, but got there in the end. So what we've got now is to remove some of this heat shielding. And it's all just, well, that one's missing, but uh, it's held in just with some 10 mil nuts and bolts. So let's do that now. All right, we've got those, that heat shielding off. Now we can clearly see this is where our hand brake cable from the inside of the car comes down, pulls on this um, bar here, and uh, that runs the left side, this runs the right side. So we will start the process of disconnecting it. Uh, so we will loosen off these 10 mil bolts all along the chassis that hold it in and then we'll uh, probably start the process of removing the whole rear hub assembly. We've got our handbrake cables disconnected. It's worthwhile saying release the handbrake on the inside of the car first. Then you can, um, then there's no tension on the line so you can sort of remove it from that T-piece uh, crossbar with ease. And yeah, it was just a bunch of 10 mils holding it in along the line, swapping the drum brake assembly over for the disc brake assembly. So you can see we've got the entire hub carrier here so we essentially just need to unbolt it from all these locations. We've got up here where the strut connects to. We've got this long bolt through here, which is for the lower control arm. And this bottom knuckle here on the hub is for the rear trailing arm. So what does that look like on the car? Well, we've got our lower control arms here and there's a long bolt that runs through there. Our trailing arm connects up there and our strut connects 
to the hub there. We also need to disconnect this brake line here because we're going because the discs um, run a different brake line. And when you do that, what you got to do is depress the brake pedal in the car. So hold it down with a with a brick or a tile or something just to depress it. And that way, when you crack the line, a bit of fluid will come out initially, but it won't continue to drip, uh, which is which is a bonus because brake fluid is such a pain in the ass when it gets on your hands. Um, also, when you do that, your brake lights are going to go on. If you don't want to, if you're going to be spending a while doing this and you're worried about your battery going flat, find where your um, find your fuse box location for your stop or your brake light and pull the fuse out of there. I just used a pair of pliers and this is the 15 amp fuse there. So on the Corolla here, pretty straightforward. The sockets you're going to need are 17 and 19 mil. And you'll also need a 10 millimeter brake line spanner or flare nut spanner to undo this. So these bolts up here are 17 mil. This long one is a 19 and then the trailing arm one is a 17. Okay, so we've got the new disc brake assembly bolted up. Pretty straightforward sort of stuff as long as you've got a 10 mil flare nut spanner, 19 and 17 mil sockets. It'll be pretty straightforward. Um, one thing to say, it'd be really good if you have a rattle gun, it'll make your life a lot easier just to break loose, um, you know, the, the trailing arm and lower control arm bolts, they were a bit bit stiff but nothing that uh, a long breaker, breaker bar couldn't handle either so yeah what we're gonna do now is just clean up the sliders on the caliper so we will just remove the caliper um, put some new grease on the sliders make sure it's all tight we'll check the caliper bracket bolts on the back there are 14 mil so let's do that I just finished greasing up the sliders and uh, double checking that everything is tight. So the only thing left to do is to run our handbrake cables back underneath the car, connect it up, uh, maybe adjust the handbrake if necessary. Then we will probably ble bleed the brakes. Well, sorry, we'll have to bleed the brakes and put our exhaust back on and that should be it. Righto, I got the handbrake cables all secured underneath. There's no adjustment on the T-piece bar, um, but inside, if you were to remove this console here, there would be an adjusting nut um, underneath underneath the boot and, uh, and just this box. But fortunately, my handbrake is adjusted perfectly, nice and tight. So um, I'm going to secure the rest of the heat shielding and chuck the exhaust back up then bleed the brakes and uh, go for a test drive.
Just finished bleeding the brakes up. I was using Penrite Dot 3, so if you've got a Toyota there, uh, always take Dot 3 brake fluid. I didn't do a how-to on how to bleed the brakes because I feel like there are plenty of them on YouTube. Pretty simple once you get the hang of it. I was just, uh, yeah, crack the nipple. I've, I've actually got a vacuum, vacuum air bleeder, so crack the brake line nipple, um, suck the fluid through, then I create a bit of an arc. With the, with the rubber tube to let the bubbles come out. Once I see that all the bubbles have risen and uh, I've got a clear stream of fluid, then I lock it off and that's that corner done. So anyway, whole car's completed and I think it's time to put the wheels back on and go for a burn. Okay, that concludes the disc brake conversion. Just taking the Corolla for a spin and it is sensational. I was somewhat um, fearful that by putting discs on the rear that we might have some brake biasing issues um, you know so I wasn't sure whether it would need a new proportioning valve or master cylinder from a Corolla that came with rear brakes but the stock master and uh, proportioning valve and all all of the rest of the braking system works sweet um, brake pedal height is just is is the same I think the feels actually better so it's a big win all round today thank you for joining me and I will catch you on the next one.